Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Like a Mouse from Pixel Train and here is the next lesson for our series Fusion for Production, the BFX compositing workflow instead of Fusion. In the last lesson we talked about creation of masks and the basic understanding what masks are inside of the Fusion workflow. In this lesson now I want to go a little bit deeper. I want to explain you how the tools inside of the polygon mask and the B spline mask work. And I hope this is also useful for you. If you like this kind of content, please do me a favor, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to support me even more, consider getting a Patreon membership. But now let's get started. I'm back here inside of Resolve and I want to make now same composite. So I stay here in this comp. But instead of working now in this layout here, I think it's a good idea now to show you a little bit about how you can change the layout inside of Resolve and also in Fusion Studio. If you are a long time Fusion user, you know that since Fusion was integrated into the Blackmagic family, the UI has changed a lot. Some things are better, but some things are not as flexible as they are. And one of these things is the UI, which wastes a lot of space here. And I want to show you some techniques which you can use to make this here a little bit more efficient. One thing is that here this bar in which we switch around the different pages inside of Resolve is normally really big. So it looks like this here. What I normally do for my practice is I switch here to show icons only. So it's a little bit less space wasted. And if you now work in a comp here and you really go here, make a new fusion comp, make your settings, make a double click onto it, and you only work in the fusion page, you don't need this page switcher here at all. So what you can do is you can go here to workspace and deactivate the show page navigation completely. If you want to switch pages, you can do it with keyboard shortcuts. So if you go here and look into, let's say here, switch to page, you see that with shift two, you come to the media page, shift four, you come to the edit and so on. So you can use that here. Or you can go here to the menu and switch here your spaces. So we have a little bit more space here in the UI. Another thing which I do a lot is if I'm comping, I need a bigger viewer and a bigger note tree. And to have this a little bit more optimized, here under workspace, you find layout presets. And inside of the layout presets, you find fusion presets. Normally you see this default preset here, but what you also can do is you can go here to the mid flow preset, which I prefer. And let's get rid here of the media pool for a moment. And then you see on the left side now, you have the viewer area where we have one viewer or two viewers. You have here the toolbar. And if you don't need the toolbar at all, because most of the time you maybe want to add a note by the name, so shift spacebar, you type in the name, then what you can do is you can go here to this time the fusion menu here and deactivate also show toolbar. But I think for this lessons here, I like the toolbar here. And you remember in one of the first lessons, I reconfigured my toolbar here, but I switched back here to the default one only to show you here the original toolbar. We have then here the node view on this side here, which is now much, much bigger. And all the additional panels which you have in your workflow, which are not used all the time, for example, keyframes or the spline editor or even the media pool or the effects, is always now here at the bottom, which is okay. And I tend to close it normally after I've used it. So that's my setup here. Another setup which I do a lot is, let's take a mask here only to demonstrate that, here, these nodes are really big normally. So what I tend to do is I go here in by right mouse button click into the flow. And I normally don't want to see the source tile pictures. This is something I don't need. What I want to see if I'm rotoscoping or working with mask is I want to have force mask tile pictures on. But this is also something you can deactivate. And if you now have this really clean flow here and you really want to see something as an output, what you can do is you can select a node or more than one node, make a right mouse button click here. And there's a show section here where we can show a tile picture. But this here is now on a node base. And be aware that if you haven't 
deactivated here these options. These are global options which are always kicking out your on the node base options. So let's activate the mask options here. Now you see my new viewport and now we can go into the topic of the lesson where we want now to analyze a little bit more what these two tools are doing and how the tools inside of them are working. So we have again our image here and I have as an example here the brightness and contrast so that we can see the output later of our mask. And let's add here now a polygon mask. And I refer really often to the polygon mask also as the Bezier mask because the Bezier curve type is the dominant curve type in this mask. And if you select the mask here, it hasn't to be hooked up to the viewer node. You see, the viewer shows here brightness and contrast here. What you see here is the mask. So this is a little tip which I can give you. You don't have to hook up the mask. You directly can select it here, which is sometimes a little bit more useful because maybe this here takes too much performance for you. And beside of now all the options which you have here inside of the node, we talked about these in my last lesson. We have now here tools, but the first thing we want to do, I don't want to rotoscope here. So let's go back here to the first frame and you see we have a keyframe here now. And this is due to the fact that here the shape animation was on. So make a jump here back to the keyframe only that you see it. Here is a keyframe. So make a right mouse button click here and say remove polygon one polyline only to make sure that you don't get keyframes for everything you do here. We need a static mask and if you also want to get rid of this keyframe which is here you can go here but yeah now everything is right and we can work now. So let's get now a look into these tools here. So you can directly start drawing and this is due to the fact that these here are working modes and to see better what these tools are doing a little tip here for beginners make a right mouse button click here on the toolbar. And beside of changing here the icon size, you also can change the button style. And we go here to icons and text labels. So now we can learn these icons here. And you see, the first working mode which we are in is click and append. Keyboard shortcut, shift C. So how does it work? I want to now select something here. So I click and I get directly points and I don't move my mouse while I'm clicking. So I get linear points or sharp points if you come from other applications like Illustrator or Affinity Designer. You can directly close the spline. You have seen that. I click on the first point. The mouse cursor changes a little bit so you know that you close the spline. But if you want to open this spline here again, you see this here is an option of the spline. You can click it here and then this here is opened. And the same thing here is for closing. So this is not a tool. This is an option of our spline. Now we have made our first spline and the question normally is for people coming from other applications, for example, After Effects or Nuke, how do I add now a second spline here? So let's go here to click and you see it doesn't work at all. Why can't I get a second spline here? The answer for this question is that inside of Fusion, every mask is hosted inside of its own node or tool. So if you want now to add another piece here, what you have to do is you have to add here another spline here. You have to go in here, select this here, and now you can click here inside of this thingy here again, and then you connect these two. How? You've learned that. So if you drag this in here, you see they directly connect. And the reason for this is that every node here, with the exception of the first mask node here, has a paint mode where we can now say I want to subtract, I want to add, I want to merge and so on. So that's the basic idea how it works inside of Fusion. So let's go back here to our polygon mask and take now a look into the other options. So if you want now to work with this spline here, what you can do is you normally can directly start by taking these points and move them around. The reason for this is we are now in the next working mode, which is the insert mode. So after you have worked with click and append, you are automatically in insert. And the question now is, when is uh, a time where I can use this click and append tool? You normally use it if you have an open spline here. So let's open it here and then you can select the point here. Yeah, so I first 
make sure that I haven't selected anything. So how to do that? Shift A selects here everything. And if you click outside here, you deselect everything. We talk about the keyboard shortcuts in a moment. So now let's select this point here, which is now active. And if you now take click and append, you see you directly add to the spline and you can close if you want it again. So this is the use of this click and append mode. And then after you finished it, you see you directly go back here to the insert mode. And the name of this is insert and modify. And be aware, this is a really dangerous thing. With the insert and modify tool, you can change your points and you also can change tangents and all these kind of stuff. But what you also can do is you add automatically points. So if you go, for example, to a point like, let's say this here, and there is nothing. So we are over the edge, you click and drag, you directly get a new point. And this happens a lot for my trainees as an accident. So be aware of that. Uh, by the way, if you want to get rid of a point, select that and use the backspace or delete key on your keyboard. Instead of using this mode here now, we go to the next mode, which is named modify only. And this is much safer because, as the name says, you can select now here, you can move stuff around, but you can't accidentally add points here at all. So this is the safe haven. And there's even a more safe haven, and it's the done mode, which means this path here is now locked and you can't do anything anymore. So let's go back now to the modify and let's talk a little bit here about these points here. If I select this point here, like I've said, it's a Bezier curve. You see we have tangents and we have the point itself. And you see these tangents are really interesting because they are always aligned to the previous or the next point. So they are automatic tangents because we clicked. So Fusion refers to this as a linear point. And if you now want to make a soft point out of this, this is named in Fusion a smooth point, you can use these two buttons here. If you click smooth and you have a point selected, you get a smooth point here, which is soft. And if you are drawing, you know the drill. If you click and drag, you directly get the tangent out. I think that's clear. If you want to make from this smooth point a linear one, you can click here and then you get the point like this. And this is something you can do with many points. So let's talk a little bit about keyboard shortcuts first. So there's a select all here for selecting all the points, but what you also can do is you can make a marquee select here, and that's also possible. And there are keyboard shortcuts. If you make a right mouse button click here, you see the standard menu. Then we have for the note itself, the polygon one mode, the effect mask. And here you see other masking tools, which you can add to the existing tool here. So that's not the context menu we are after. We are after the Polygon 1 polyline. I know it's a strange name. It's a little bit clearer a little bit later. So if you go into this context menu, you see all the modes here and their keyboard shortcuts. Also these options here. And you see most of the keyboard shortcuts here have a shift key which means the shift key is the standard key which you use inside of the masking tools. And the rest here is really easy to understand. There are some commands, but yeah, this is copy, for example, uh, which is absolutely clear. This is the standard. Select all is shift A here. So you can use shift A for selecting everything. And then you can use, for example, smooth for all or linear for all. So that's it, really easy. Let's talk a little bit farther about now transforming all these points. This is important later for rotoscoping, if you want to rotoscope something for animating it, but also here. If you select points here, you can directly move them around like this here. But sometimes you want to move more than one point, And for this, there's a really interesting tool here, which is named a shape box. I take these four points as an example. I select these here and then you can search for the shape box, which is here at the moment. And the keyboard shortcut for this is box, so shift B. And this box is really interesting because if you take a handle here, the opposite handle is always the reference point, you see? It works like this here. So if I grab here, this here is the reference. If I grab here, this is the reference, and so on. So this is something I use a lot later in neuroscoping. You also can take here the line itself and move all the points here around. So this is a really cool thing. Shift B for the shape box. Let's go deactivate that. 
again. Another thing you can do, and this is a little bit hidden for the beginners, is really often we have later to rotate the shape or we have to scale it. And for this, we have really special keyboard shortcuts. I select now my four points here again. Let's take them. Here we go. And I want to rotate them. And the rotation is named inside of Fusion here. It's a transform. So you go over the point or the position. And like I've said, it's not important that you really click on a point. You also can take another point here. So the mouse pointer is now the reference point. I go over this point here. Hold down the T key. And if you now click and drag, you see you now rotate this shape part around my mouse position. And to make it clear that's really the mouse position, I go here into the middle and I press now T. And you see I rotate around this mouse position here. So T for transform, which is the rotation. And then we also have a S like scale. So I go over this point, for example, hold down the S key, and now I can scale from this point on. And you see, it's only scaling the points which are selected. So really easy to understand. I think that's enough about transformations here. You see, it's really easy to understand. But there are some specialties you have to be aware of. And this specialty is in the second note, which I want to show you. So let's take a B spline note here. And you remember the B spline note from our introduction. You see, we have the same tools here. But if you now click, 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 you remember that you get these curved lines here. And these curved lines here are like a NURBS line. So they are a little bit different. And these are really good for selecting later uh, organic shapes. To now make these shapes here sharper, you have to add points. And you remember that our insert and modify mode is exactly the thing we are after. So if you click, for example, here, let's go here, really close to this point, you add automatically a new point and also here. So this time, this mode makes absolutely sense. And to make this even sharper, there's a keyboard shortcut. You hold down the W key, like wait. We wait now the point for the NURBS curve. Hover over this point, hold down the W key, and now you can drag to the left and the right here to change that. And be aware that you don't want to have anything else selected. So I only want to have this point here. And now you see it's only for this point here. But all in all, this here is meant for organic shapes. If you ever want to convert a B spline to a polygon or a polygon to a B spline, you find in your context menu, so right mouse button click, again inside B spline polyline, you find here an option. This time it's B spline to Bezier. If you click that, now you have still the name, but if you now take a look here to the points, you see this here are now Bezier points. So the conversion was done. And if you want to convert it back, right mouse button click, polyline again, and there you find busy to be spline. If you ever come then to the point that you have a spline which has too many points, so let's make some points here onto this spline only to sh show that there's a really nice tool for that. And this tool is also working only in the selected areas. So I select only these points here. And there you find a reduce tool. So if you click here, you get this little pop up here. Here you see the knots. And then you see we can resample this curve here again. And Fusion tries to hold the shape. And you see this point and this point here is vanishing. And the shape is still there. So this is something you can try if you have generated a lot of points. Let's show another way of generating many points. So there's a draw tool, which I haven't shown yet. So if you go to draw and append and draw here something, you see you can directly draw something. You get a lot of points here. Let's go to modify, shift A for selecting everything. And then we can try again, reduce. And now we reduce the amount of points for all these here. So you see how this function now works. So now you have seen a lot what these tools are capable of. And now comes the next step. 
later we want to use this here for rotoscoping, something we don't want to do in this tutorial. I think then the tutorial gets too long. But if you have a moving object, you normally get motion blur. And the question is, how do we make a soft shape? Let's take a look here how the shape looks at the moment. The shape looks like this here, which is a sharp edge because it's vector. But what you can do is you can take the polygon node here and we can introduce a soft edge. This soft edge here is configurable by the border width. So if you have a soft edge here, you can go to the border width and be aware you can move it to the outside on the inside. If you go here to the slider, it's sometimes too fast, but if you click here inside and now use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can see that this here is changing. And it's always changing the digit which you are over. So if you go here and make this here really, really small, go here, now you see it's much, much more controllable. Yeah, so it depends where you are in the digits. And you see this is something you also can do. But this soft edge is always around the whole shape. But if you have motion blur, it's normally in the direction of the motion. And to do this here, we have a tool which is named, so named double polyline inside of Fusion. You activate the double polyline here. And for this, we have to do one thing, only to understand it better. If you now make a right mouse button click, you see that we have polygon one polyline. So the name of the node, which is polygon one, and we have the polygon line here. And we are in the modify only, what I do now is I say this shape here is okay. I go into done. Now this here can't be changed anymore. If you want to change it, you have to leave the done mode, go back to modify or whatever you want to do. We are back in done. Okay. And what we now do here is I click here to double poly. And what now happens, and this is really important, make a right mouse button click to see. We have now two polygon lines outer polygon line and an inner polygon line. And both of these are active at the moment. The inner polygon is the polygon line we started with. So this polygon line is done, as you see here. But the outer polygon line here is in the insert and modify. And I want to go to modify only. Okay, let's do that. And what can we do now here? We can move the points around. But now you see one thing. You see, here we are still in the done mode. Under the right mouse button, we have the inner and the outer, and here we are modify only. So what's going on? This is sometimes a little bit confusing. We have now two polygon lines here, and we have to switch between them with the tab key. So if you tap now with the tab key, you now see that we can drag out these points here. And now you see, this is a second line which we have around the poly shape and this is this dotted line. So this here is the outer line here. And we have a control here in every direction how we want to soften it out. If you now work with the inner line, you can press the tab key again. And now we could work here, but we are still in the done mode. So we can also go here to modify. Now we can really work in both worlds. But this is really hard if you start with one point. So how do we know in which we are? So you can try here. Now we are in the outer. Press the tab key. Now we are in the inner. You see why I use here the done mode. And this line, like I've said, is really often used here for motion blur. If you want to change how it works, so if we are here at, for example, I go here to the inner point and move this here around. If you don't want that this double line point for the outer is following the inner point here, you can do that by the right mouse button. There is under the outer polygon here, the follow inner poly lines. This is something you can reset. And what you also can reset is the position. So if you want to bring it back here, you can also click here. So these things are doable and this is something you have to get used to. I hope this helps here. The last thing 
is about this pivot point here. So how we can change the pivot point of a mask. Because if you are now having a whole mask and you want to move it around or rotate it, you will see that for every rotation you do here, you see we have here our rotations. Let's take the Z rotation here. You see that it rotates around this point. So we can use the shape box and move the points around or things like that. But what if you now want to say the pivot should be there? What you can do is you can hold down the M key like mask and then you can move this widget around. And you see, instead of moving the shape, only the center is now moving. You can place now this new pivot point here, release now the M key, and now the pivot point of the mask is here. Okay, this was quite a long tutorial. I hope it showed you some things you haven't known. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. I'm really happy to help. And like I've said, Please, if you haven't done it, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. We see each other for the next lesson. You Helga Maus, have fun.